recall, last time we repaired this DJI Spark. It had a broken arm. We used a combination of plastic welding and epoxy to repair this unit. And it's been really good since. It's been a perfectly functional unit. The only problem is, looking at this repair, it's kind of ugly. No one wants to see this uh, glued together piece of plastic. It's a lot nicer to repair it with some original parts. Thankfully for us, we now have available for about 25 30 bucks on eBay a full replacement chassis. Here it is. Look at that. Here you can see the two side by side, the spark and the replacement body shell. The new body shell that comes pre-wired. It's an exact replacement of the plastic. It has the port for the battery already installed. It has the wires for the motors. It has the little covers for the sensors. Seems to be pretty good. For 25 bucks, I don't think you do much better. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna wanna do is to start to take apart the old drone. And we'll just start quickly and easily by removing the props. We also have this landing gear on this particular unit, so we're going to remove that. And of course we're going to remove the battery. The next thing I really want to do is make sure that I keep each corner, each part, each motor and everything associated with that corner in that corner. That way we put everything back together the way it came apart. So to do that I'm just going to get four containers and use those to store everything separately. Start by popping these little LED covers off. For that, we're gonna need some sort of tool, most preferably a small flathead screwdriver. If you look on the inside of the LED light, on the inside of the arm, a small little space. I don't know if you can see that. Right, right about there. So if you pry up on there really carefully, the LED cover should come right off. Let's see if I can do this without totally blocking the camera. There we go. You'll notice that that sticker is red. That's the water damage indicator. You see how it's white under the corners. This one actually got it because I was using rubbing alcohol to clean the area when I was doing the repair last time. And the rubbing alcohol actually set off the water damage indicator. That's too bad, but uh, that's why that's red. So next, we need a very tiny Phillips head. This will probably do the job. Focus, there you go. Here we remove two screws each for the ESC covers. Be very careful here not to strip the screws because it's definitely a possibility. These screws are very small. Next, let's work on the upper body shell. It's having the motor still in place going to give us some clearance to do our work much more easily. You do need an allen key here. It's a pretty small allen key. And there is also some sort of silicone on top of these screw heads. I previously removed that silicone. It's probably there for some vibration dampening or something. When I put this back together, I could easily replace that silicone. There are one, two, three, four, five, and six screws to get the top off. Okay, look, does that fit? That does fit. And careful, again, do not strip these. Let's use that. Okay. Those are the back four. Now the front two are actually on either side of the gimbal. Now once that's off, the next thing we're going to do is pry off the top. Probably right in here, start prying. Here we go. There we go. Save this for later. And then we're down to the internals. We have uh, back here the GPS unit. Um, we have a cooling fan. I assume there's a processor somewhere in this area. Let's start unscrewing. Remove the GPS unit. There are four screws and one flat connector for this. That 
That is the GPS. Now remove the metal clip to the left of the GPS board. This requires two screws and of course the clip. Underneath the clip is the main power connector. Behind the GPS area are two antennas. Remove the foam foil and the two antenna connectors. Now remove the L-shaped metal retention bracket near the front of the drone. This has three silver screws and one black screw. Next, undo the downward facing sensor connector to the right side of the drone. This also requires the removal of the foam tape that is above it. To remove the three remaining screws that hold the flight controller in place. Remove the two connectors at the front of the drone for the forward facing sensors. There is also a piece of foam foil protection on top of this. Now you can remove the flight controller from the drone. Be careful while doing this as the gimbal and the camera are still connected to the board. Next remove four screws that hold the gimbal assembly to the drone body. Now remove the front position sensor and camera. There are two screws that hold this board in. There is adhesive holding down the front part of the gimbal mount. You will need to pick at this to remove it. Now you can carefully remove the entire gimbal assembly from the body. It should slide right out. Now remove the two screws that sit on top of the plastic box that covers the downward facing sensors. Remove the plastic cover over the sensors. Now carefully peel off the wiring that is attached to those sensors. You will need to reinstall this wiring into the new body. Now remove two screws that hold the downward facing camera. The camera should pop right out once these screws are removed. Now we have to remove the four motors and electronic speed controllers, also known as ESCs. Each ESC has three solder joints to the body and three solder joints to the motors. All six of these must be removed to get the ESC out. I used a bit of clay here to help hold the board in place while desoldering. Repeat this process four times, once for every corner. Three torque screws hold in each motor. Remove these screws to remove the motors.
The next thing we're going to do is reassemble the drill. First we're going to start by removing this plastic box that sits around the downward vision sensor. We have two of these now, so this part seems redundant. Also before I continue, I'm going to grab some Loctite. We're going to need that as we do assembly. The first thing we're going to install is the downward vision camera. That just slots in there nicely. And we have two screws for the camera. The downward vision camera goes in with two screws. Behind the camera are the two sensors. The sensors are covered by the black box and two more screws. Use the existing adhesive on the cables for these sensors to reposition them back to where they're supposed to be. You may also need to use silicone uh, in case any of the cables don't stick. Now the gimbal can go back into the body. Line up the front part with the notch on the body. Install four screws to hold the gimbal mount in place. Apply adhesive to the front of the mount where it meets the body, the place where we scratched off the adhesive earlier. Now the flight controller can sit nicely in the body. Reinstall the front vision sensors and camera. There are two connectors for this assembly. There are also two screws that hold this assembly in place. Add silicone on these connectors to ensure durability. Unfortunately, the video from the next few steps in this repair was not very clear, so I took a picture of the final product and annotated it to explain the next several steps. First, reinstall the metallic foam pads over the front and the left side of the drone. These go under the L bracket, which must now be installed. The L bracket uses three metal screws and one black screw. There is another connector opposite to the L bracket for the downward facing sensors. Install this along with metal foam tape above it. Moving to the back of the drone, the three screws that hold in the flight controller must be replaced. Now the screws on the side metal bracket for the power connector must be replaced along with the bracket. Next install the GPS which is four screws and a single connector. Finally, reconnect the antennas and the foam metal tape that goes over it. You can now snap the top cover back in place. Now we can pop this cover on. It's just press it into place. All of the solder pads on the ESCs must be tinned in order to ensure a good joint when we resolder these back into the drone. Please excuse the potato quality footage here. Tin the three wires inside the body arm. Solder those three wires to the ESC. The ESC fits in the arm only one way. And we're 
just going by the order of the wires here. Clay can once again be used here in order to make the job easier and hold the ESC in place. Now you can tin the wires on the motor. Feed the motor wires through the appropriate hole in the arm. Solder the three motor wires to the three remaining pads on the ESC. Three screws are used to reinstall the motor. Make sure to use Loctite on all of these screws so that they don't vibrate loose during flight. Add silicone over all of the solder joints on the ESC. Repeat this process four times, once for each arm. Once all four are done, it's a good time to test the drone before completing assembly. This is the moment of truth. All four lights fire up, indicating good ESC operation. The gimbal works. Pair a remote up to it. The camera works as you can see on the phone. Take a look at that. All four motors spin up smoothly. Oh. Alright. Now install the ESC covers and the LED covers. Each ESC cover takes two screws. The LED covers simply snap into place. Now install the six screws for the top cover of the body.
The assembly is now complete. Installing the props and the battery is the only thing left to do. This is a good time to test the drone. Before any actual flight, it's a good idea to perform an IMU calibration as well as a compass calibration. The drone may exhibit unstable behavior if this is not done.